here, it's Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. You know when you see a product and you just think, that is what I want to do next. And I saw this uh, transfer me sheet here, and this is exactly, I just saw everything. I just saw everything that I could do with it, and I thought I would share that with you. So this is the Flower Mania Transfer Me Sheet from Dress My Craft. Now there is one sheet in here. This is a really big sheet, and I intend to make at least four cards out of this one sheet. Now I'm going to show you exactly how these sheets work, but I am going to show you four different cards that I make with this, and I don't intend to have these as a set, although they would look very cool as a set, but I just thought I would give you some more ideas uh, than just kind of following the same thing for each card. Now I trimmed off the very excess around the outside, and I love my trimmer here as well because this one is nice and big. The blades are super sharp. I get a clean cut every single time. I have that arm that I can extend out the side for extra measurements. And it's also 12 inches um, tall. So that means I can fit all these big sheets and measure them perfectly. Now I have pretty much cut this down the middle. And then I pretty much cut this into four and a quarter-ish by five and a half-ish. Uh, inches just roughly because I know that I'm going to work with these a little bit and then with this one here I decided I actually wouldn't cut it in half because I was looking at the images and where I thought I could kind of turn these into cards and I'm going to kind of cut this a little bit unevenly actually and so this top portion there that I just put off to the left hand side will become one card I'm going to cut that down in a minute and then this one here with those floral images is going to be kind of the center point of uh, one of the cards that I create too. So I did have a few tiny little scraps from these, but barely anything. Now, obviously, you could just cut this directly in four equal even pieces, and that would be one way to do it. But I like to really focus in on the pieces that I want to have on my card fronts and things, and I just thought I would make some of these a little bit different. So I have one of these cut down a little bit, and you can see that that is going to create a really nice border around the outside when I create this card. So this is how you use the transfer me sheets. It doesn't matter if you have kind of big sheets like this or if you cut out individual images. I have some white cardstock, which I'm going to pop these down onto and you can see it would have a really nice border, but I'm going to cut these and trim them a tiny bit afterwards. So I'm not perfectly worried about getting them straight. You peel off that front film and then stick them down to kind of uh, face down. And then I tend to just use a sponge with a little bowl of clean water and I gently sponge on enough water so that you can see the image semi appear from the other side. Then I'm gonna pop that one up there and move on to the next one. So take off that little piece of clear plastic film. And by the way, that piece of clear plastic film is great for shaker cards, so don't ditch it. And then just do the same process with all of these little transfer sheets. Now, there are some amazing, amazing designs from this company with these transfer sheets. They are a really good price per sheet, and you can use them in so many different ways. I already have several videos on my channel using transfer sheets and giving you lots of different ideas. And when I saw this particular design, it's just one of those designs that I knew I wanted to use and take further. So I thought I would give you some ideas uh, on how you could use them whilst I was at it. Now, I definitely could be that type of person that would buy the sheet and pop it aside, um, hoard it. <laughs> and But I decided to be really brave and actually use it and enjoy these cards. So once I've given these a minute to soak in, you literally just slide off that backing sheet and these designs are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Now I do want you to remember that whilst I am creating these, I chose an image that actually has a lot going on in the background, particularly the ones that have the floral images. So I don't want to cover those up and hide them. Otherwise I would have chose a completely background image like the bottom right hand one. But given that I chose some that are uh, actually have focal images, we're going to work with that. Now on YouTube, there is a channel called Marimi Small Art, 
She is a mixed media artist. Uh, she does do cards and things as well, but these were from her shop. I will leave a link to that down below. I have forever looked at these and I finally ordered some a little while ago and have just had them sitting here waiting for the perfect opportunity. These are kind of like rice paper or vellum maybe, uh, printed vellum and really, really gorgeous. Now I was flicking through these because obviously one of my cards does need a focal point and these gorgeous big flowers here, this one in particular is the one that I was looking at because I feel like these colors really match what I uh, needed for my little card front. So when I'm looking at this flower up the top here, the colors go nicely and it's a nice big image that I thought I could use as well. So that was the one that I was pretty sure I was going to go with. I also ordered a pack of the tissue papers, set two from her shop. I'm not sure if these are still available. I haven't been in and had a double check, but uh, I will leave the link to her shop down below um, and you can have a wee look if you are interested in this kind of thing. These are all gorgeous and I was kind of looking at these and wondering if I could have a really nice big bright focal image that for me for once wasn't a flower and I thought as I knew I wasn't going to give these uh, cards away as a set, I kind of had freedom to do what I wanted with these ones. So that gorgeous big uh, butterfly kind of stood out for me. Maybe it's a moth, <laughs> um, but either either it doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to show you what I do with it and I am going to cut this out with my little fussy cutting scissors. This is definitely tissue paper so at the moment it is really uh, delicate. Now I'm going to take a little scrap of um, just normal cardstock and then I'm going to add some matte medium in my glue. It is the Ranger multi medium in the matte finish. I'm going to pop some down. You should probably use a paintbrush but <laughs> I'm just going with my finger at the moment. Uh, it's a great tool that we have right there on our hands. I'm going to give it a layer over top as well and that's going to seal it nicely and then I'm just going to leave this to dry and in fact this was really late at night so I just let these dry overnight and came back to this in the morning uh, before the kids got up and everything so I got up really early in the morning and started filming again where I'm going to fussy cut out this image and it is completely dry it is absolutely gorgeous and I did go around the edges with a black marker just to take away any of that white uh, core of the card stock showing uh, from where I had fussy cut the image. Now here I have my card base and I'm going to put all of these cards together relatively quickly because uh, lots of the things are really basic and I have four cards to get through so I don't want to make this video long. <laughs> uh, so anyway I have my gorgeous little moth or butterfly there. I found a couple of kind of label tags and actually I don't know where these came from. I have been putting them uh, in a pile on my desk where I've been meaning to track down where they came from and I haven't gotten there. <laughs> so I also recently ordered these paper rose uh, black and white sentiment sheets. Now usually this isn't um, something that I have tried before. There are 12 sheets in this pack so there's two sheets of each kind and they come in black and white. And then when I, I really did uh, look at these very carefully before I purchased these because if these have sentiments that I'm not going to use then that is literally just a waste of my money and these resources. So I was looking at these reading them all really carefully and these are exactly the sentiments that I would use and stamp and uh, reuse time and time again. So the fact that uh, they are ones I would use is a massive plus and this for me is kind of um, just a shortcut and sometimes it's okay to have shortcuts. Now there are definitely lots of companies who make these kind of pre-printed sentiment strips. However, when I look at them, if I see a handful that I think, eh, I'm probably not going to use those, then it makes it probably not the best purchase for myself. So when I went through these, I read them really carefully and I thought this is exactly what I need. I think I'm going to make the most of these and I'm really pleased that I purchased them. When I get them, got them in my hands, uh, I was really, really pleased uh, with the quality of them. I was pleased with the uh, clarity of the printing. It was really clear. I really like the heavy uh, heavyweight paper. It's kind of a thick card but not too thick. Uh, yeah, I really like them. So I'm pleased with these and you'll probably see me using them because that's what gives me value for money is making sure that I use these. So I have cut out one that is a thinking for you one and I'm going to pop this down onto my little label tag there. I'm using some tattered rose distress oxide ink just to take away that really bright white nature of this and kind of make it 
not distressed because it's not probably the right color for distressing but just add a little something more to it rather than it being that really stark white so then I'm going to pop that down onto my tag I'm going to use some liquid glue to make sure that it is stuck there in place I have a couple of brads which I have not used in a really really long time and I thought these just kind of added to it a little bit so I stuck those through the holes at each end of the label then I'm going to pop down my card front onto my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base then I'm going to put a little bit of glue down the center of my little uh, feature there and pop some foam tape on its wings so that its wings give, have a little bit of dimension and I just put um, normal glue on the body so that the body sits nice and flat a little bit of foam tape on the back of my sentiment there and then I'm going to pop that down pretty much in the middle at the bottom and this is the first card finished done and dusted and I really like this this is a bit different from the other ones but I think everything goes together really nicely and it didn't take me very long at all now this is actually a new one that I got into and the reason why I got this one is because I don't have any of these kind of big long sentiments that run down the page like this and I love the words in this sentiment so this was just a little bit of me. This one just felt right. This is the Cling Cherry Day. I am going to stamp this down onto a little bit of vellum with some Versa Mark Sticky Embossing Ink. I'm taking some super fine white embossing powder and I'm going to uh, emboss it with some white. The little message reads, just a little message coming your way to wish you a bright and cheery day. And as I said, that just feels really nice for me. It can be used in so many occasions. It's not too kind of specific for a birthday or an anniversary or anything. It could be like that. So I like it when it's uh, a little bit could be used for anything. And as I said, that focal image is still there and still looks gorgeous in the background. We're not covering it up too much, but that little message is uh, just shines through perfectly. Now for this one here, this one's a little bit tricky. You kind of have to see it in real life to appreciate <laughs> the work on the card. But I'm going to kind of fussy cut around just one of these flowers, the one in the bottom left hand corner. And I'm being a little bit careful because obviously I want to keep both parts of the card here. So all I'm actually going to do is going to lift up that image. Now the rest of it is going to go flat down onto my card base. So I have cut this down and I think the card uh, card front measures four by five and a quarter inches. I'm going to line that up so there's a nice wee border around everything and then this one I'm going to pop some foam tape on the back and it will kind of look continuous except for the fact that this little bit is going to be popped up. As I said this is a little bit hard to see in uh, on the video kind of thing the dimension of it but it looks a little bit cool in real life and very very simple to do without having to do too much to the card at all. So then once I peeled off all of the release paper from the back of the foam tape I'm going to pop this up and pop it back in place exactly where it came from. You could definitely do this with both of the flowers but I felt like just one was enough just to add a little bit of something. Then I came back to those sentiments uh, which were really really handy and this one is going to say big hugs. I love that gorgeous big sentiment in the middle. It's really bold and this is quite a busy background so I wanted something that was going to stand out and that really bold uh, dark sentiment is going to work perfectly. Now again just to take out a tiny bit of that really stark white of the sentiment background I'm using that tattered rose color. I only want a tiny little bit of ink on here so I actually made sure that my finger dauber had not too much on it at all and I just very very lightly went around the edges just to take away that little bit and then when I held it up against the card it felt much better and not quite as bright. Then I happen to have a little bit of black uh, fun foam that had double sided tape on both sides of it. So I snatched that out of my little pile and that was perfect to pop up the sentiment and then this card is very simple and also done. Now I'm going to take another one of those little um, label dies and this one is come out of here. This was the happy birthday and I stuck that down again in the same place. This time I'm going to use some twine or some string and add a little bit of that tattered rose ink just around the edge again. It's just the same ink because obviously this comes all from the same set so the colors are going to work really easily. I could use uh, a little bit of brown or something if I wanted to. Um, but I didn't want to add in any more colors. I'm using black string for this and some of the kind of petals of the flowers have a little bit of kind of dark gray black in it. So I was hoping not to introduce too much more brown. 
Then I just add a little bit of double-sided tape onto the back and this is what is going to hold uh, my sentiment strings around the back. I'm going to have this one off to the side a little bit and this is kind of just faux detail. I mean they're not actually holding on the sentiment at all. It's just a little bit of extra detail for the card and in fact I did decide to even put a little bit of double-sided tape on the back of the actual sentiment so that I know that it won't kind of have the weight, um, It won't. the string won't actually be holding the weight of the sentiment and there's no chance that it it can shift at all. So I'm just going to kind of pop these around the back and they're just nicely there so they're not obstructing those two gorgeous flowers. And again, that background is still shines out and it's still a really beautiful card. So popping this one back down onto a background and then I have created four gorgeous cards from that one transfer me sheet. And this was a really fun, I really enjoyed creating this video. I had a whole lot of fun and there was a whole lot of freedom and uh, not having to create all of those backgrounds from scratch. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm hoping you enjoyed this video as much as I did creating it. All the links will be down in the description box below. And other than that, I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.